Alrighty, folks, it is 10.33 here on the East Coast on a Thursday evening. Welcome to Twitch Line, your home for relationship advice here on Twitch. I am your host, Hoda Hori, as always, bringing you the uh, relationship advice of the day along with my co-caster and best friend, Mr. Acorn. How you doing, buddy? Very well, sir. Uh, it's a nice crisp evening. I feel like this evening is finally moving in the right direction. Uh, a reasonable temperature. Uh, actually relax with the window. So, happy days. Yep, absolutely. It is uh, starting to feel like fall outside, and I'm loving it myself. Uh, I love the brisk weather, and I definitely do not miss the humidity here in the D.C. area. So, wonderful to look forward to that, though. It is supposed to be 87 on Saturday, so go figure <laughs> but as always welcome to twitch line folks uh you can contact us here if you have any questions uh relating to relationships or if you want to send us articles comments whatever you feel like you want to any thoughts of the day you can send us an email here via twitchlinelove at gmail.com you can also tweet us also on twitter at twitchline uh also we are streaming live to youtube so if you want to see any of our older shows you can go to youtube type in twitch line love and you will find our channel go ahead and subscribe there you'll get to see all of the older content uh that we put right there on twitch line you'll see all of our uh, sunday focus segments as well as our freeform thursdays that we normally do but because we switched freeform thursday with normal wednesday so we're going to be talking uh topics from reddit today and also just to give also a reminder for those who want to listen to us on mobile you can go to soundcloud take us on the go on your tablet phone or any mobile devices just go to soundcloud type in twitch line love in the search and you will find us there on uh, soundcloud you can listen to any of our older shows there and you'll be able to get us on the go so you can listen to us at any time in the car uh at the beach anywhere you have any internet signal so Welcome to Twitch Line. I am Hoda Hori, that is Acorn, and we're back talking about uh, more relationship advice here. No free form today, and we've got a lot of fun topics here today we're talking about, Tim. We do. Uh, we are off of a two-week break. My uh, good buddy here, Hodo, coffee Ebola, and was uh, basically just passed out, knocked out talking up a lung for the last couple. So uh, we need to regain our footing here and uh, bear with us while we get back into this. But uh, we're gonna go right into it tonight. Our first topic is about how to start up a conversation with a lady. So we have uh, from r slash dating, a post by the Lone Rook. And the topic is ladies or guys, I don't judge. How the blank do I strike up a conversation with you without it being weird? And in what <laughs> context is that even a possibility? So he starts off by saying, Tinder sucks. It's awful. 95% of my time spent there is fruitless, and the rare matches I get end up uninterested or uninteresting. The rest of the apps are just about the same. That said, I'm having a really hard time finding any other viable context with which to meet people. I'm an extrovert. I have no issue striking up conversation. I'd like to believe I'm quite polite. That said, there are so very few contexts in which it's acceptable for me to talk to someone I don't know without it being an issue. Women, in parentheses intelligently, group up at bars, and every time I try to talk to a girl there, her friends are either upset with me for removing her from their social outing or think I'm a creep for just trying to make small talk. Buying a drink for someone is so taboo, given the shit people uh, do, I don't even want to bother. If I try to talk to someone at the gym, I'm running the risk of them deciding I'm harassing them, and now I don't have a gym. Chatting up with someone on the street is basically a dead language. I'm a gamer and a board game player, and the number of women my age in my area I meet through those avenues is slim to none, and they're almost always spoken for. I'm trying not to give up and to be patient, but I also want to be proactive and keep my eyes open for opportunities. And I honestly just don't know how to best approach the task. I don't know what to do. My workplace is most definitely not an option. 
and I'm not from here, which doesn't help either. Any advice? And then he says, I'm 23, if that's at all relevant. Okay, see, well, any first reaction? What, 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 what comes into your mind after hearing this guy's semi-rant? Well, it is a semi-rant, and he seems a little bit down on himself. Uh, he's also got some assumptions here that I don't necessarily agree with, because he's looking at situations where he is uh, ranting about, essentially, uh, approaching women on the street, talking about the, talking to them in the gym. If you want to talk to somebody and you don't have any ill intentions, you can just absolutely do so. The thing about it is, is like I think he feels like he will only do it uh, while in search of a date or something like that. And women can see through that, honestly. You know, this is it's one of those things in which it's he reeks a little bit of desperation, which that is also something that the opposite sex can also detect. Um, it is not attractive also. And it is one of those things that at 23, the hormones are going. He feels like he needs to have a partner, blah, 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 all sorts of other things. But he fe he seems a bit jaded with regards to the assumptions that he has with regards to where he needs to meet women. And I get that. And I could understand if it's not going your way at that particular age, you feel like you're in the prime of your life, you should be going out and doing things, but you're just not having any luck with it. Okay. Um, he says that he's a gamer and a gourd game player and all the, uh, there aren't very many women that are into those hobbies. Understandable. Uh, those are typically male hobbies that uh, don't necessarily get a lot of female players. So he's going to have to reach out and uh, go outside of his base. Uh, he is one of those. It's one of those things in which I think he needs to extend his hobby and social reach in this particular case because. Um, there, the places that he mentions are not necessarily places where women are willing to talk with regards to guys who are looking for dates and things like that. And I'm trying to sort of word my words correctly here. Uh, y you need to be more in friendlier social situations besides than just your hobbies, I think, in this particular case. And uh, I think he needs a little bit more variety. The the jadedness, I think, will end up going away once he has a little bit of success. But you can tell that he is uh, a little bit down on himself and hasn't had uh, very much luck lately by the way that he's sort of wording uh, this post. Sure. And so I think what you were saying about the uh, the gaming groups and stuff like that and, and his hobbies, I don't know that it necessarily means that there's no option for him there. But I think that, as you said, you know, perhaps his hobbies are not going to be the ones where he'd have the best opportunity to connect with a single female. So, you know, stepping away from your own hobbies, maybe even taking on new ones or just exposing yourself to something you're not used to could open up a whole new group, you know, a whole bunch of social circles that you wouldn't normally be attached to. So definitely got a point there. Uh, I mean, I just think it's interesting. He started off saying Tinder sucks and like, yeah, we all know that everyone everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. And it's also the thing right now. That's what everyone's using. So while it sucks for a lot of people, it is also how things are working and what everyone's on. So if you want to say Tinder sucks, you can. But that's the same as being like, I'm just going to look for girls at my board gaming group. Like you're really limiting the possibilities if you just don't if you don't join in what everyone else is joining in same concept there um so yeah it's not easy and it's not easy out there not using the apps either so it's just that's life and it never was either so you know you can't really expect that so he says he's 23 extroverted polite no issues striking striking out conversations yet he's still having issues so we need to kind of figure out what he's doing that could be getting in the way of his uh, success. And I thought the first thing he brought up about uh, 
approaching women in a group, like in a, in a bar or a social setting like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a tough, a tough angle to take because like you really have to put yourself in the, in the mind of a woman at a bar and like remove yourself from the context and imagine yourself that you are that woman at the bar and what you're dealing with. Like some random dude comes up to you in the bar. You don't know them and you do know what men are like at bars. So, you know, right away, some dude comes up to you and starts talking to you. You already got this sort of feeling that, Oh, here we go again. Another drunk dude's going to come over and tell me he likes my ass or something like that. Like, so you have to be, uh, you have to occur to them in a different way if you're going to do that. Otherwise, they're just going to automatically put you in the group. Uh, I think that the psychology behind strength in numbers is very much alive in that situation. So if you're in there with uh, a girl, it's in there with a group of girls, they are going to protect each other from all the drunk idiots that are trying to get in their pants. And like, of course they are. It makes sense. Uh, and, you know, also you have to consider like, who says these girls came to the bar just to get chatted up by you? Like maybe they came there because they wanted to enjoy their time with the other girls. So if you're getting turned down uh, because you're approaching these girls and, and these other girls are not happy that you're trying to take their friend off to, you know, work your game on her, it, it might be because you're kind of messing up their vibe and what they came there for. Well, that's so they, the thing. They didn't that's... show up just to be hit on, right? Well, that's the thing, right? Like read the situation. Uh, this particular person might have the issue where he just does not understand uh, or is able to read uh, the social cues, which is very possible. You can be very extroverted. You don't have any issues talking to people. But if you are terrible at reading uh, social cues and little hints about the situation that you're in, then you are in deep trouble because you're going to put yourself into situations that are not going to be successful. And, and, and your example is perfect. It's like you are trying, you find a girl that's uh, attractive, but she's in a group of, of women. Uh, you don't, why would you want to pull her away from her group of friends? You, you want to uh, make friends with the group. They don't know you. You don't know her. Um, and as I said earlier, it's, there's there's a uh, there's a sense of desperation in a lot of the stuff that he's writing, and when you come off as desperate and and single minded with regards to trying to find somebody to sort of hook up with, it, it's very obvious. He, I think he needs to change his approach almost in a way that, like you know, you need to be friendly. You need to be able to let people know that you are not in any way threatening also that you need to also go in there and not have any overt uh expectations of what you want sometimes sometimes the dating scene requires you to just be friends with people and and just talk and hang out and maybe later on something were to happen uh as they get to know you and to meet you um, people are a little bit more comfortable in going forward with, uh, uh, with other things like that. And I think, I think there's, I, I don't know if I'm reading into it too much, but I think there's this estimation that like when he's hitting on women, he's immediately going to get a reaction, but it's like, no, uh, that's not how it is at all anymore, especially with, uh, with people at bars and just the whole like you know trying to hit somebody hit hit on somebody at a bar a lot of times more people with friends and you you just want to have a good time so you don't want to get hit on so therefore don't hit on people uh make up some conversation if there's a sports game going on at the bar that people are watching or uh something topical or or you know you throw in a little factoid if they're debating over something with regards to uh, like a question or something like that that they're discussing that you're overhearing. That's how you throw yourself in there. You know, you, you help them with, with facts or interject yourself in a way that uh, is helpful. Uh, and that might not be helping. And that might not be what's going on here. And he's going immediately for the, the, um, the, the approach and he's getting shut down. Right. But it's a cold approach, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, let's say this... This girl across the room is looking, you know, making eye contact with you, smiling, 
not taking the initiative to walk across the room and talk to you, but allowing the door to be open for you to go talk to her. That's, I mean, that's a different thing mm -hmm. than, you know, that just show like walk up to a girl's back. She's never seen you before. And like randomly talking to her, you have no, no reason to be there talking to her besides the fact that you're thirsty and you want to try to get with her. And girls don't like that. They're automatically turned off. But unless you are in the top 5% of beauty and attractiveness, in which case they might be surprised and, you know, wowed by you. But chances are, if you're on here listening to dating advice, you're not in the top 5% because they don't really need help dating. They're good. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> having a good reason to talk to someone is, makes a huge difference. You know, like like you said, if you, if you if something going on in the area that to have a conversation about, or something interesting, or you have something to bring to the table, that's great. And you could approach the group rather than the individual, and maybe even bring some people along to introduce them. Then it takes the spotlight off of you in a in a good way, so that you're not intimidating at someone. Uh, it, this is not. You know, for all you alpha bros out there that are just going to charge in and do your thing, if that works for you, great. But if you are not that guy and you're trying to be that guy, it's pretty transparent and it's actually more likely to fail. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. Uh, moving on, though, uh, he talks about how buying a drink for people doesn't get you anything. Yes, that's true. Buying a drink is giving away a drink. You, you, maybe at some point in time, or on um, a TV show you saw, a guy bought a drink for a girl, and she was flattered and had a conversation with him, and that led to something. In the nightclubs, in, in most situations, buying a drink for a girl that you have no connection with whatsoever beforehand means you just gave away 5 to $12, uh, because she will you know, maybe take it, maybe not, and thank you, and that's it. Five to so, twenty dollars, Tim, well, depending yeah, on the city you're in. Right. <laughs> but if you, again, if you've been talking a little bit, if you've been smiling, if there's some reason for that to be, you know, that to be there, then go for it. But I say that kind of behavior for after we've been chatting for a while, and we know that it's like a way to continue the conversation in a nice way, and you know, kind of keep keep things going, and it's like a nice gesture. And that way, you know, you're not buying a person's attention with this drink. And it's more natural that way. So I think that's a better option. Uh, I have an issue with the next part, and I've probably said it before, but I'll say it again here today. Mm -hmm. uh, talking to someone at the gym to hit them up to get a date is annoying as hell for them. It is borderline harassment. Like, you have to put yourself in these people's shoes. They came to the gym to exercise not to be hit on if if they show up and they're not they're not on the equipment and they're you know super dolled up or something and maybe maybe they're there for the attention and maybe they want you to come talk to them but if someone's down there in the middle of their set working sweating has their headphones on that means no that means mind your own business go do your workout because they're there for that not for you this this sort of recurring theme that like women are there just to be hit on this is this is really misogynistic and it needs to go. So if you do decide you want to try to approach someone in the gym, make sure the timing is right. Do not do it in the middle of their set, obviously. Do not do it if they have their headphones in because it means they're already doing something and listening to something and not new. Do not comment on their form or give them help they didn't ask for because that's rude. And do not talk about their body because nobody asked for that either. Yep. So if you have to, if you're just like so smitten by this person that you have not met but think they look good, maybe go wait in the line at the water fountain for, with them and, and make a comment, you know, make a conversation there. Or if they've given you legitimate signals, if they've initiated any sort of conversation with you, if they've, if they've asked you about form and something like that, uh, about some kind of lift or something, then there it is. That's for you. Otherwise, just do your exercise. and. You know, hold your breath till it happens. Uh, again, moving forward, chatting someone up on the street, yes and no, it depends on the city. Uh, if you try to talk to someone in some city, they will look at you like you're crazy because people just don't do that. They walk right by each other and go on with their lives. 
And in other cities, if you don't talk to the person you walk by, you're considered rude. So know where you're at and, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to talk to people. It, it, as long as, again, you're not coming across as thirsty and trying to get something from them. Just be a nice person talking about nice things and see where it goes. Uh, so like he said, he wasn't from a place and like, I can see how some people would be, uh, they feel like less power because of that, but actually you can use that to your advantage. So not knowing an area means you get to discover the area and possibly discover the area with other people who are discovering the area. So going to anything local, like a music festival, art festival, holiday thing out in the, out in the public area wine and beer events, food events, that kind of stuff, you're going to meet people that, A, like that thing. And, if, and you know, if you like food, you know, there's not a clap for you. Uh, so does everyone else. <laughs> and But if it's a particular kind of thing that you're really into and you go there, all the people that went there are also really into that thing. And you already have a conversation starter. So you know, that's it's actually a good thing not to be overly familiar and bored with where you're at. If you're not far off a of college age, you can actually go to university events, um, lectures, you know, where they have invited other lecturers from other places. And if you have an intellectual interest, you could share that with someone. And if there are no events, you can actually make an event yourself, sporting kind of thing, meetup groups and that, and see if you can get people to come to you. Yep. I've seen a number of times people on Reddit, on these dating sites, pulling together local people to do a singles thing in the area. So. You know, you can make your opportunities if you have, uh, you know, some ideas on how to do it. So, Z, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. We see tons and tons of people uh, frustrated, ranting, whining about their dating situations on Reddit. Some of them are not even looking for advice. They're just whining about how hard it is to be, like, a man in the dating world. What do you think is going on there? Like, what... Someone who's coming onto a, a, a dating Reddit not to seek specific advice without a question. They just come on there and just complain about the opposite sex. What, what do you think is going on with that phenomenon? Well, there are a couple things. One, we're becoming an increasingly techno technologically based society. Which means that uh, there are issues with dating where it becomes easier and easier for both sides to be pickier, which is one. A uh, lot of non-face-to-face -face interactions, you, as you can say, like, you know, this guy says, oh, Tinder sucks. So, like, you know, he's being pre... He's feeling that he's being prejudged before... Uh, being able to talk to anybody. Um, two, as we are becoming a technological society and people are using more apps and uh, prejudging people, the the experience that you gain going out trying to pick up people um, is very short and going to be very lacking. There are less and less people going to bars to meet people instead they're going to bars the reason that they go to these places completely changes it's not because you're single and you want to you want to meet people well i can meet people online why the hell would i need to go to a bar to do that people are going to bars uh to uh hang out with their friends or actually just drink and and enjoy themselves to to have fun well, but to meet the person they met on you know, online. online. Exactly. Yeah, there are other reasons for it. But the, the reason is not to meet somebody, uh, meet somebody organically uh, face to face. That's just not going. That does, that happens very, very rarely now in, in a younger demographic. He says he's 23. That's not the reason they're there. So therefore, uh, you know, you're already lowering the, the pool. And then now there's this, the thing about it is you're absolutely right about the sort of whiners and the, uh, and the, the people who are commiserating, as I describe it on Reddit, uh, because more and more of them feel like they're being isolated because they don't, they aren't having any success with uh, 
the dating apps or even organically meeting people. So therefore, they go to somewhere they feel like that, oh, you know, woe is me. Everybody's like, I'm going to tell my story and I know there are other people out there. So that's going to make me feel better when I hear somebody post in the comments. It's like, yeah, man, it happens to me, too. It's like I'm not going to uh, I'm not meeting very many people at all. I'm around the same age as you are and I'm just having a hard time. People want to commiserate with themselves, uh, with other like minded people like them to make sh to make it feel like, oh, they're not alone in their situation and they don't want to feel uh, weird about it because there is an aspect of this where if you feel like you you need you should be with somebody but you don't have any success in the dating world you're the freak it's like everybody else is finding love but you're not finding love what the fuck is wrong with me uh it's not the case uh people have issues dating it, it, it's just normal reddit now has become a bit of a community especially on the research and dating sites like with this post right here who want to commiserate with other people who are suffering with what they are also going through also. Maybe pick up some actual advice here and there, but with posts, a lot of posts like this, all they really want to do is share their misery with other people and commiserate with them uh, and understand that other people are suffering from the same problems too, and it helps them basically feel better. And that's what my or breakdown... Not. Or not alone, exactly. So that's what it, that's what actually is happening here. Um, you know, the thing about it is, is first things first, you never want to give up on on the dating scene. That's not what you want to do, especially if you are wanting to find somebody out there special for you to date and and go around and doing stuff. Two, he's twenty three, which means that he's really young. And there's a long life ahead of him for it. So, yeah, you're going through a little bit of a slump. Maybe change your routine a little bit. And that might help you out uh, Help you out with your advice. Three, if you feel like all of these things that are not working aren't working, then definitely find something else. Um, you know, you, Tinder sucks. Great, you're 23. Tinder sucks. Use something else. Try Match. Plenty of Fish, for example, today said that they are no longer allowing filtered images on their site. So they are actually only allowing natural photos of people to be posted in their dating, uh, dating platform. So you know what? Those men and women who overuse the filters to try to make themselves uh, feel look like they're a little bit more attractive... That's not happening anymore on that particular site. Maybe you try a different dating site. Maybe you try a different uh, different location, or maybe you try different things. You know, uh, you, you like going to bars. Maybe take a bartending class where there are other people there who want to learn mixology or something like that. If you're going going out drinking all the time, and maybe you find somebody like minded like you. It, it's all about what type of effort you put in and go up, go about it and maybe sometimes changing the routine up so that you don't get jaded in doing the same things and expecting a different result. So, yeah, I think you hit her on the head with the, what type of effort um, yeah. people are, a lot of people seem to be really frustrated and whining and ranting because they are putting what they feel is so much energy and effort into finding someone and getting out there and like they're really extending themselves in their minds in reality they may not be doing it as much as they think they are but the thing is it is the same like a stupid analogy it is like putting all your energy into like pushing a building over mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you're doing if you're doing it the wrong way and you're not using the right tools you're not coming out from the right angle there's nothing you're going to do that's going to be successful or you'd be very very unlikely so instead of Doing that, approaching it from a different angle, and doing things that would make you more likely to succeed, succeed such as some of the advice we just gave here. Uh, you, you know, finding success in in those smaller ways can actually build up your confidence, so then you don't feel so bad that you don't need to go on the internet and try to find other people who also feel bad. I, I think that it's not helpful. It actually is hurtful to go out seeking people who are also pissed off that their efforts are not being met with ease and they're not like being handed the love of their lives because they tried so hard hey man if you really want something you got to work for it and there are a lot of people in this world who feel like that uh it needs to be handed to them on a silver platter but that's not the case and especially in relationships that's definitely not the case people are not right, trying to work bend. for it in the right way 
Yeah. People are not just going to bend over to your will and be like, oh, 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 you're so, the, absolutely I'll go home with you and become your girlfriend or become your boyfriend. It just doesn't happen that way. You have to, you, you have to work at it. You have to make sure that, um, you know, you approach it the right way and you have to let people know who you are. You can't just expect people to, uh, immediately go with you unless you are in that quote top five percent of attractive people uh that you know that person is looking at you more for your physical attributes than they are internally a lot of people uh, are not like that so therefore you know you have to let people know who you are uh before they'll even give you a shot so it's all about approach so mm -hmm. so shall we segue into our next topic here yeah and this one this one is a little different because you know we were we've been focusing a lot on like you know how to talk to women but what ends up happening like if you are in a relationship already and we we've talked about quote deal breakers before um you know situations where people have little rules or uh little you know things that they feel like um are just a no-go so in this particular instance, um, we're going to talk about an interesting topic. It's religion. And there was a post here by Comics824, and we'll go into it here in a second, uh, where the comment is, so religion or lack thereof, a deal breaker? Question mark. By uh, Comics824. And Comics posts, could you date or be with someone with a different religion other than yourself? Is it a deal breaker? Would you be accepting of their beliefs or would you hold out hope of converting them? Do you think it would stay a point of conflict? This is a real honest question because this is something that I believe that a lot of people who date need to actually answer this question because religion, especially in America, um, are is really important to some people and not important to a lot of people, but it is something that you have to bring up and discuss if you want to have a really happy relationship with somebody. And, you know, we live in an urban environment and there's still, there's a large amount of people who are not highly religious, but then, you know, there are a lot of people who are the opposite way and religion is a very important thing to them and it is very uh, dear to them and they do want to find somebody who is like-minded in their religious beliefs now i'm going to use myself an example here because i am a particular religion and i've dated outside of my religion and most of the girls that i've dated have been outside of my religion and the first one was Christian and I am not a Christian and religion was never a real issue. It was just not, um, she was not overtly religious. I am not overtly religious and it never really was one of those things that was important, uh, in our dating lives. Now there was a second person that I dated, uh, who was not Christian, but, uh, is not my religion either, but going into the relationship, I knew that her religion was important to her. And it was one of those things that I had to ask myself, am I okay with that? And I was like, yes, this person is a wonderful person. The religion is important to them personally, but you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not, I myself am not going to be like converting anytime soon, but it's one of those things in which I wanted to experience the person over, you know, and work out maybe some of the issues later on if we even get that far. We didn't get that far, but the time we had together was nice. I mean, we were both uh, very, you know, it was an enjoyable time, dated for a bit, uh, and, uh, you know, the the points of religion did come up a couple times, you know, it's like, why would you want to date me? I'm not in your religion. And it's like, and she would ask me the same thing. It's like, you know, you know I just found you as an attractive person. I thought you were very nice. The religious thing is not very as important to me as it might be to you. And I completely understand that, but I thought that we might be a good match and I wanted to go out and see if that was going to be the case. And she was like, yeah, this is, this is nice. It didn't work out, but it was just one of those things in which it, 
at that point, it wasn't a deal breaker. But I can I can understand if you are in a long term relationship and you're getting close to possibly popping the question. Um, but even before you even get to that point, it's something that you do have to discuss. Personally, for me, it is not a deal breaker. Um, my family would love it if I were to marry somebody in my own religion. But to myself personally, uh, I would consider it not as one of the important determining factors of finding a partner. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, and this is kind of going off of, I mean, you, you through your sharing, have touched on a number of different elements. Mm -hmm. factors I think people should take into account when they consider dating someone who is not of their religion or just, you know, issues that can come up with dating and religion as they occur at the same time. Um, one of them is being a religious person dating a non-religious person. And by that, I mean agnostic or atheist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, these people have to ask themselves, are you okay with your partner having a different idea about faith and spirituality? Does, is it significant enough to you that they be of the same religion or the same values that come along with religion? Or, you know, and perhaps some, some religions do, does your religion state that someone who is not religious in your religion, are they going to hell or some variation of that? Because that could, you know, that could kill the relationship even before it starts. If you think that the person you care about is going to burn in hell, just because they're a different religion, that's, that's not really going to work for you. And, and in the other direction, if you're atheist and agnostic, is it a deal breaker for you if your partner follows a religion, whether it be loosely or strictly? If, you, if you're so against it, then perhaps you cannot, I don't know, you can't kind of commit yourself to someone who has those beliefs. So these are things to consider. Uh, there's also the whole divide between my religion and your religion, being meaning you know, how, how closely do these belief systems align? Do they have the same tenets? Do they have the same story? You know, uh, the Muslim religion, Jewish religion, the Christian religion, a lot of the stories are overlapping. They may have slight differences, but there's some similarities inside there. Um, so perhaps that can make it work if you're okay with the parts that do align. Uh, but if there are some clashes that you can't, you can't kind of bring together, then might not work. Mm -hmm. We also have to consider how much religion factors into our daily lives. Are you religious but only go to church on Christmas and Easter? Or are you religious and you go to multiple times a week with all of your social activities kind of relating to your church group and all that? So, in general, you've got to be really honest with yourself about what your situation is and what the person that you're interested in. And, you know, at some point you have to say maybe. This is not going to work just because of the way that we, you know, the relationships that we have with uh, higher powers. Uh, the person asking about conversion, this, I think, actually, to me, I find this offensive. Maybe I'm just offended today, but <laughs> I think it's pretty messed up. Like, why should someone change their relationship with God and their faith and belief system so that you can be comfortable dating them? And marrying them. It's basically saying, like, you're more important than their God, which is pretty fucked up. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me give you a counterpoint to this, because okay. uh, there are a lot of evangelicals in this country, uh, Muslims, sold the same way, and there are actually religious rules uh, in religions that dictate whether or not, you know, you would be eligible for marriage. So, for example... In Islam, which is, uh, I'm Muslim, that's my religion. Uh, it's my family's religion, I've grown up in it, and I'm comfortable with it. Not really, you know, you know, very strict Muslim, but let's just say. But, for example, um, there are rules as to getting married into a mosque. Um, it is looked upon more favorably if... Uh, when you marry a woman, they are, if they are not your religion, that they convert to your religion and, um, make it 
it, make it that way so you are a Muslim ho- Muslim household. But if you if she refuses to convert, and you love each other, that's fine. Uh, a lot of mosques won't do the ceremony; they just won't. And um, and if that's important to a family or something like that, that conversion might absolutely be necessary. I know that in uh, in Judaism, I think the the religion is actually with the woman and not with the man. Um, for example, when with kids. For example, if your mother is Jewish, you're automatically Jewish, if I remember right. That's if, I, if I'm remembering this correctly. And it, it's just a way of how it goes along. So, like, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of that associated with it. Evangelicals, for example, in the United States, uh, their whole premise is, quote, under the guise of saving people and making sure that they don't, quote, burn in hell, uh, want to impose their beliefs on people because they feel like it is what is better for them. And that is how they live their lives. Is any of all, is any of this or all of this in a way like good? I can't say, but I would agree with you that it is in a way offensive because uh, I think we live in a country, and I, I, and sometimes I actually question it. Some, sometimes that I think religious beliefs shouldn't extend past people who don't want to listen to them. Like they're great in the home, and that's as pretty much as far as as it should go, unless you're going to your you know temple of worship, whatever it may be. But you shouldn't be imposing it on people. If they want to believe with what you believe uh, because they want to find some sort of spiritual enlightenment, then that's fine. But I think you're right. Um, There are people who think that it is super important for conversion to actually happen for everybody in the relationship to to be happy, which is why I think he mentions it. Yeah, no, I understand that the, the goal is to be happy together mm-hmm. and that a conversion can mean, hey, everything's cool now. We can get married in this house of worship and start our lives together. And for people who are not uh, deeply devout, they can make a conversion and perhaps find happiness in the other religion. Um, what I don't think is okay is when someone's like, if you want to be with me, you need to give up your God. You need to, you know, you need to choose me over your God. I think that's pretty messed up. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think someone should be pressuring another to, to convert their religion just to maintain a relationship and or get married. That's, and that's my personal belief. But in the same way, I don't think it's okay for people who don't believe in God to try to separate their partner from their religion because it makes them more comfortable to say that, like, maybe, maybe you personally don't want to get married in a church or a monster, something like that, and want to have a non-denominational wedding, uh, you know, I guess by the state or something, that's, it's fine for you to want that, but for, for you to go and say, in a way, I want to like snip or, or, or push you away from the religion that you're connected to, so that we can have the marriage my way, the way that's comfortable for me, I just, I think that's pretty messed up. Yeah. No, and you're. I think it's very uh, arrogant. I, yeah, but the thing about it is, is you know, a lot of the times religion doesn't make sense. Uh, religion has an air of arrogance to it. I mean, essentially, religion is a set of guiding principles and beliefs that people should live their life by. So therefore, yeah. I mean, it, it it is one of those things in which uh, there are aspects to it that you know can be very i don't want to i don't want to use the word offensive but Say the um, words. Say know, it. It, it's just you know disheartening <laughs> i guess would be the yeah, nicest but, way of okay. saying there are communities out there where there is a uh, the kind of homogeneous right so like for example when i lived in the middle east mm-hmm. in abu dhabi this is not a common issue because it is primarily muslim Mm-hmm. A lot of the people that they bring into the country for work are also Muslim. And if you're not, you're allowed to practice your religion in whatever way, and you can get married in your religion at your church, whatever you want to do. But cross-religion marriages are few and far between, and only in the direction of uh, men marrying women 
who convert to the Muslim people. Mm-hmm. So the Islam, yeah. Uh, and it's not that much of an issue over there because it's there's sort of a it's sort of a dominant religion. You come to a place here, like in Washington D.C. area here, we've got everyone. We've got every type of person, and they're mixing up with every other kind of person. So it's much more common that people are going to have a conflict between their religious upbringing, the way they deal with their religion presently, whether they have religion or not. And so I think that people will be going through the same issues as our as our friend here that posted on Reddit. Um, and you know, I, I know that you and I both have this experience of dating people of other religions, yep. religions other than our own. I, and you shared your, uh, you shared yours earlier. I, for one, I'm not strongly religious. Um, I, I did that whole like Christmas and Easter in, uh, in the church growing up. And other than that, just basically, you know, trying to be a good kid. Uh, but I ended up dating a girl, a Korean girl who was in the U S studying. Uh, Christian, and after dating her for a couple of weeks, she started telling me how I needed to start coming to Korean church with her, even though I wouldn't understand what they were saying, and how I needed to learn Korean language so that I could better understand the sermons. And that's when I kind of knew that we had a very different concept of how things were supposed to go, and, and, and that she was just probably too religious for me to be comfortable and for it to like suddenly dominate my life so much that I had to learn another, learn another language to participate in her religion. Uh, it just didn't compute for me, so I stepped out. And then when I was living over in China, I dated a girl there who was Buddhist. But in that case, it was really very simple because there's nothing in Buddhism that says you have to proselytize and convert someone to your religion to be okay with being with them. And she, I think she mostly just did it to keep her mom happy anyway, so it was really not a problem. Yeah. So, you know, for me, not such a big problem, but I know, I know a number of people that have had breakups and have had marriages that never came about because of these differences in religion. So, like, the bottom line, if religion is a key factor in your life, make it a key factor in who you choose to date and who you choose to be with. If it is not, then don't worry about too much. And if it comes down to family pressure, then you need to decide whether that person you want to be with is worth risking family drama and or possibly lifelong family issues to be with that person because that's i mean that's just a little that's just the just think of it yeah oh a funny side note uh korean church uh from my friends in college who you remember um very very fun guys korean church was mostly a social aspect um my friend sang who used to uh you know, want to date other Koreans because he 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 wanted to date girls, but he would prefer dating other Koreans if he could. Um, explain to me that <laughs> if you want to date Korean girls, uh, Korean church is a great place to to pick up Korean girls <laughs> because uh, it it is looked upon as a neutral and friendly social environment. Yeah, the religion is a little bit of it, but they say uh, he said that half of them aren't even that religious. They just want to be seen there. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> they, they may not actually be so strongly about religion there, yeah, but yeah. try not going. Try yeah. not being a part of. Oh it yeah, there's so terrible. much social pressure associated with it that it's it's just it's important that you just show up. Uh, and it was funny that she mentioned is like you should really come to Korean church because she you, she knows you don't speak Korean. How the you know it would take Correct. you a year. <laughs> it would take you a year to even understand what's going on. It was all about and being honestly, seen there, and that's I all don't it really know was. <laughs> if you learn a language through the context of religion only, it might you might end up sounding a little bit weird when you start talking to people. Imagine someone who only spoke in biblical verses. Just be weird. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it so, would just be odd. <laughs> why, why don't we uh, push on to our third topic here? Okay. Uh, yeah, this religion can be a hot debate. I think we went through pretty smoothly. Yeah, and, and the, the thing about it is, is you know, to, it, and my final thought on the whole religious thing is, is that it's to each his own. You, I think you nailed it on the head when you said, um, if it's important to you, then it should probably be a topic that you bring up early on in the relationship and you get it out of the way, because. It's just easier that way, honestly. True. Mm-hmm. And you can apply that to a lot of areas. Um, okay, so next topic. 
We are moving on. This is again from the Dating Over 30 Reddit from the user J Corb. J Corb, J Corb, J Corb. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the topic is generally would you be weirded out by my apartment? So, women over 30, would you be immediately weirded out if you went to a guy's apartment and just saw a weight bench taking a most living room? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he says, I know this is a really stupid question, but I feel like I have to ask. I'm 31, and for the first time in my life, I actually have my own apartment. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice view, all things considered. I just moved in less than two weeks ago, and my only furniture is my bed. And a power rack, basically a weight bench with a cage. I could technically fit the rack in my bedroom, but it'd be pretty tight fit. So part of me is like, oh, hey, maybe I'll decorate my apartment like an actual fucking apartment. You know, a normal couch, TV, maybe a coffee table, nothing crazy. And part of me is also considering the possibility of just making a place that's like a, a place of self-improvement. I'm pretty, oh, sorry, I'm in pretty bad shape, to be honest. So I've been trying to learn to cook healthy meals, and I'm thinking about maybe just throwing the power rack up. It would take up a pretty significant portion of my living space, a uh, living room, but I would probably have enough to can No, sorry, but I would probably have to cancel the couch I ordered to be delivered later this month. Uh, I mean, I could still have a normal looking bedroom and I still have a table and chairs for eating dinner, but I guess part of me wonders if that would be immediately super weird to go to someone's apartment and bam, weight bench and cage. Again, I know it's a stupid question, I just don't know what I would do. Okay, so first things first, not a stupid question. No, no, it's not at all. I mean, the details are a little bit silly, but the the larger conversation we're going to have about this is actually pretty valuable for anyone looking to date and uh, have people come to their place. First of all, congratulations, buddy, in your apartment. That is a milestone. Some of us get there earlier, some of us later, but having your own place, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say, if we were talking about this as like a larger topic, it might be, how does the way that you decorate your place tell a potential partner who you are and what they're signing up for by dating you? So we can look at J Corp's situation and then expand the conversation beyond that. So he's newly moved in, and there should be some expectation that things are not in order yet. If someone comes over to your place within the first week, there are going to be boxes. Not everything is going to be in place. It's going to be messy. You know, no judgment there. If it's a year later and everything's still like that, okay, maybe it says something about your motivation and your priorities. But uh, a bench and squat rack should not be the centerpiece of anyone's apartment. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger should not have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if you have a workout place, but again, not centerpiece. It's not what someone should look at when they open the door to the place. And if you don't have a place for someone to sit comfortably, then you probably shouldn't be entertaining people at your place. Like, and dude, if you ask her to sit on the bench as like her sitting place, I'm going to pee in your protein powder. So <laughs> 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 like, unless you're a crazy gym nut, having major workout equipment in the common area is going to seem odd. That's just it. So I go with the couch, the TV, table and chairs, like, you know, what you think normal looks like. It's probably the best bet in this case. So Z, uh, before we move, and just sort of like the generalization, the general topics, like, do you think this guy is is uh, weird for asking this or thinking about this stuff? Is this, is this absurd? No, it's his first apartment. This is actually a legitimate question. I mean, he's 31, so he, he's, he's getting a later start with regards to getting his own place. But it is a proper question because you have to ask yourself multiple questions. One... Am I using my apartment to entertain people? And if the answer is yes, uh, then you need to make accommodations suitable for hosting guests, be it a girl, be it friends, be it whatever. And that means not having a power rack in the middle of your living room. So the, that, is, that is one. Two, if you feel like the power rack is absolutely important, then you might need to be an adult and, you know, put it together and take it apart. Put it together, take it apart. It's going to be annoying. That's heavy duty, man. It is heavy duty. But if it is that important to him, then he might have to spend time taking things apart, piecing it out. Or what he could do is 
he pieces he breaks it up takes it apart when he knows he's going to be entertaining guests now nobody cares what your apartment looks like if nobody is coming over that is one of the one of the things it's the, this is the this is the counter argument to keeping the rack in the middle of the apartment but it, the the thing about it is is you can't have it when people are coming over it's just not it's not right and I kind of wonder what this like. So he says he's kind of out of shape and starting to think about eating it well. At well. So why do you have a power rack and a bench? Like, why is that your furniture? If you're not, if you're not a crazy gym person. Why do you have that in the first place? Yeah, you know what? We had a friend who it's had just, uh, who had weightlifting equipment and weights and stuff like that before he had a couch. So that stuff like that happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I completely understand where he's coming from. So you know, whatever the situation that led him to the fact that he had weightlifting equipment before he had a couch first, it's like okay, it happens. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like you know, in this particular case, uh, he has to ask himself these questions and analyze his situation with regards to whether or not like what he wants to do with his own apartment. I mean, um, in this particular case, I would be in favor of not having that thing in your living room. You, you want to have a couch. You want to seem normal. You don't want to put it together and take it apart. Every time people come over, that would get annoying, but right. the like workout that the, and stuff like that, that's exactly. just going to be clunky but, and in the way. In a way, that's his own personal workout. So if he knows he has friends over and he can't do any lifting, taking that piece apart and moving the weights could be the workout that you need anyway to, to go go out. I'm going to speak on behalf of real life here and say that is just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, of course it's just not. not going to happen. You, you get people that are like super gym people and they don't even want to put the, the, the weights away at the gym. So you, if you're at home, you're going to be like, eh, I'm just going to sit down. Just watch the TV. I'll leave all the stuff in a pile. I'm making the argument. I'm not saying he's actually going yeah, to do it. So I it's like, so, so, but it's one of those things in which it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be doing it. Actually. The, the other point that I want to make about this is that, you know, there are no stupid questions in this particular way. Like, he doesn't know what he should be doing in this particular question, and he's reaching out for proper advice. I actually ad admire the fact that he's like, you know, I try to, wa I want to make this a place of self improvement at the same time, but understand the situation that you're in too. So it's like, you know, a healthy meals and one thing. It's like, okay, focus on one or the other. If you want to do the healthy meals, maybe deck out your kitchen do stuff like that you know it's you I know, mean, yeah you know, most people have a gym membership because all that stuff is bulky and in the way and you know yeah. you go there do your thing and you got your house exactly uh, if you don't have money for that or you know whatever the reason that's fine what's but like that? maybe you want to get rid of this this bench stuff use that money and buy yourself something for the place to make it more you know livable yeah it's, it just comes down to priorities for me right exactly if the priority is to have a place that is inviting to a woman that's not going to do it unless she is also super power lifter 2000. <laughs> um, now, if the objective is to get in health and get in shape, then maybe you put the entertaining women in your home on the back burner yep. and you make that your thing. So and that either way is... though, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that second part is is the argument for keeping it in the living room. It's like, you're not going to be entertaining people for a while. You say you're out of shape. Maybe you're not as attractive as you feel like you need to be, and you don't want to go out into the dating pool. Then absolutely keep it in the living room and just be fine with it. But understand that you really shouldn't be inviting anybody over. Uh, or if they do want to come over, you explain to them that uh, my apartment isn't really for entertaining guests. Uh, I keep a weight, I keep weightlifting apparatuses in my living room. I know it's a little odd, but people don't come over. And I really feel like that it is important for me to get into shape. And people will understand that yeah. when they do come you over. You better use it, bro, though. You better use it because yeah. if you're the dude that has a lot of stuff in there and you look like you don't lift, people are going to be like, what's the deal? Right? Exactly. If There's... I walk in someone's apartment and they've got a bunch of guitars and amplifiers, I'm like, oh man, play me something. They say, I don't play guitar. What's the deal? 
Exactly. We can we can actually hook this guy up with a certain anime that both of us are watching that will motivate him to work out and lift. Um, great 12-part anime series that he could watch to motivate him while he's doing his power rack <laughs> reps in the <laughs> living room. <laughs> so, hey, let me... um. Let me sort of expand this conversation a little bit. Um, so if we're looking at ourselves and we're saying in our, in our, kind of, of our place, mm-hmm. our apartments, our homes, whatever, a place that we want to invite someone into, we need, to, we need to look and say, what does our place say? What is the way that it's decorated say about ourselves? Or what does it say about our motivation? So if your place is very cluttered or even disgusting, you've got food sitting in the sink, it's just sort of rotting and there's weird smells, dust, animal hair. You, you don't have clean towels in the bathroom. All this stuff is sending a message to any person you bring into the house. If you're bringing in, if you're, you know, if you're 21 and you bring in a 21 year old guy friend of yours and he sees this, he's like, yeah, you're just a dude. You're just a single dude. And that's how it is. If you bring a woman in there, she's going to look at you and think this guy doesn't care. He's not treating his own self and his own place very well. So what kind of treatment do I expect to get from this? And do I want to be in this environment with him? Right? So cleanliness is really important. And it also indicates your motivation in other areas of your life. But if it's just coming down to like, you have a bare apartment, sort of, you know, not a lot of furniture or something that that can also send a message. It doesn't have to be a bad message, but it can say something. It can say that, well, maybe you don't value collecting stuff. Or it can say, you don't have any money right now. Mm -hmm. Or it can say, uh, you're not planning to be here for long, so you're not trying to load up on stuff. So, you know, just, you don't have to, like, change the way you're doing things, but just be aware of what that message is that you're sending. It also can indicate how mature you are. So what do your decorations say about your mental age? Right? Are you... Are you in your thirties, but still have your apartment decorated like you you had it back in college? Because that might tell a woman, this guy is not done with that part of his life and doesn't want to be. If you have an apartment that is full of uh, expensive furniture and electronics, that's going to say something different than if you have, you know, a bunch of yard sale stuff. And like, again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, Perception is pretty important when you're considering bringing someone to into your space. So, you know, be aware of all of it. Don't go out and buy a bunch of expensive stuff because you think it's going to make you necessarily more attractive. It can help for sure, but, you know, there are other ways to show that off. Um, the way that you arrange your place kind of indicates what matters to you and what doesn't. So if I walk into your apartment and I see you have five gaming consoles, a massive TV, a bookcase full of games, then the statement that you're making to me is that you're a super gamer person. And that's mm-hmm. what you're into. That's what you're doing with your spare time. And if I'm a woman and I'm seeing that, I'm thinking to myself, there's a decent chance he is going to be playing a lot of video games. And if I'm not okay with the guy that plays a lot of video games, then there it is. It's written on the wall. So having all that stuff there can, can kind of be a red blinking light for a potential partner. I have a buddy, and uh, I don't know that he's on here tonight. Sometimes he comes in and checks this out. I'm going to use him as an example tonight. He has a three-bedroom home. Two of the bedrooms are gym rooms. So if I walk into his house, I know what this dude is about. I know he's, he's into health, he's into lifting, and he's not necessarily trying to make his home uh, I don't know, ready for kids or something like that, because that's not kind of where he's at. Yep. And it's fine, but he should recognize that if someone comes in and is looking at him as a partner, they might say, okay, well, what are your priorities here? Your priorities are this exercise stuff, and it's more than a little. So uh, maybe that could be a turnoff if they're super lazy and they don't want to move. You know, they might be like, oh, this person's going to drag me into this. I don't want to do that. So let's be aware of that. And the last one uh, is kind of like the relationship mind versus single living mind. Like if your place screams man cave or it's just perfect for you and your cats and everything's pink, like it is very good for you alone. But is this a place that is inviting to someone to be kind of 
with you in. So sometimes you have to make those adjustments to show someone that you're considering them and that you're looking for a future or you'd be paired up together. You know, I, a lot of uh, people are pleasantly surprised when they show up to you know, a guy's place or a girl's place and you know, things are good, hot, heavy, romantic, and you know, you do your thing and they want to stand, spend the night over and you have a contact lens case for them and a toothbrush and stuff like that. Like that's, that's some baller shit right there. So, mm -hmm. you know, take some notes. Uh, yeah, that 79 cent extra toothbrush comes in very handy uh, and is also considerate for people who spend the night, you know. So, you know, little tiny little investments like that are sort of nice, especially if, um, you know, you, you expect to have guests you, over. If you have some uh, feminine hygiene products in there for the ladies, you're basically going to get married that day. That's, <laughs> like, that's like God level. Yeah. <laughs> So I was watching uh, Queer Eye with uh, my wife and, you know, the fashion stuff doesn't really speak to me too much, but like they do really awesome home design stuff mm -hmm. and they talk a lot about this kind of thing where how you have your place set up is going to tell people about you and make it, you know, more easy for them to be part of your life. And then. So, you know, if people are at all curious about this kind of thing, you can watch the there's two recent seasons where they added in this element of the show. It's pretty good. So, so fun. Yes. It's time for a bit of honesty. Mm -hmm. Possibly some embarrassment. Okay. And I would like for us to think back to the way that we've decorated at various times in our lives and even consider what that might have said to a potential partner in our early years and up to now. If uh, you're okay, oh, sure. you want to share some of your some of your kind of setups and what that might have said to a uh, person that you were dating at the time. So, uh, I'll use my college dorms, as, uh, college apartments, my first apartment as an example. So, in, in it's actually interesting because I was dating a girl in college, and we had like-minded. Uh, likes we were both anime fans so for those uh weebs who are watching us on stream uh there is hope for you out there trust me i've experienced it it is it is wonderful um i had a lot of anime merchandise on my walls posters wall scrolls uh all sorts of crazy things on my walls that um you know at the time were awesome to me but uh it was a huge reflection of uh, of who I was at the time. And that was my college dorm room. My roommate had gotten suspended uh, the second half of that year and gone home. So I ended up having pretty much a solo dorm room. And it was uh, it was one of those things that was nice. I could decorate it any way I want. I had the freedom to do so. Um, it was relatively clean. You know, I didn't have a vacuum, but I would be, you know, brushing. Uh, I would use a broom to get stuff up. And, you know, the the only thing really that would be issue would be an issue, especially in a dorm room, is dust. So you could always borrow a dust buster from, from somebody. As I moved into an apartment, um, I still had the same stuff. Uh, but, you know, you, you have to be mindful of roommates and all sorts of other stuff. But as I've gotten older, uh, I really start to appreciate... Uh, nicer things yet I still am, it is a, still a reflection of my quote dorky personality um, I for example collect uh, you know MCU posters but instead of putting the posters up just the way they are I have this fascination of framing them and making them look really nice so they become great uh, decorative uh, actually wall art and they're in nice frames, it's behind glass, I get them backed, and they look really nice. And, you know, I have a couple Star Wars ones, I have a whole bunch of MCU ones, and I use them on my wall, and they are a reflection of who I am. Does it make my place look a little childish? Yes. But it, it's not like, um, but this is my particular interest. I have a friend who is in love with Martin Scorsese. And his house is filled with Scorsese posters, 
really nicely framed Scorsese posters at that, along with signatures of actors that were in the movie, like The Godfather, uh, The Departed, things like things, movies like that. And they're really, really nice. Uh, and, you know, it is a reflection of who he is. Um, and, you know, it's... It is just a. It is just one of those things. If somebody were to walk in, they see all the MCU posters, and because Marvel's reach, it's. Uh, in my mind, I would say it's like, don't necessarily think that they are just kids because everybody watches superhero movies. Uh, but if I walked into my friend's place and I saw all of the posters from Goodfellas and The Godfather and The Departed and all of the other movies, I was like, oh, this guy's a real you know gangster movie buff. And it's pretty neat, but it's a reflection of who you are. Would I be embarrassed to show that off to somebody if I'm dating somebody? No, because if it's a reflection also of, you know, how they react to you, it is something I do like. So therefore, I would love to find somebody who would come to my place, see the posters and be like, that's freaking awesome. And it's like, oh, wow, that's that's really nice, because then you have one less thing to worry about about your partner like if you know they react really eh, towards it or they don't like the decoration of your home uh whatever you know whatever and however you decorate you decorate it yourself that could be a problem in the long run because you know you hear these horror stories of husbands having to throw away all their junk because their wife wants to decorate their house and he doesn't get a say in anything that goes in it Marriage is a shared responsibility, and one person taking over the decorating or decoration responsibilities is a fair, you know, fair cohabitation situation. But if he goes into that situation and he's accepting of it from the very beginning, then you theoretically abdicate your rights to to keep any of your stuff. <laughs> So, you know, uh, again, like with the religious thing, better to get it out of the way early on. <laughs> so, you know, what is acceptable can hopefully be something that you can share later on as part of your relationship. True. My two cents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then this is like a take me as I am kind of thing for you then. Yeah, sure. pretty much. I mean, yeah. like, you know, I, I have nice stuff, uh, but I also have appreciation for some of the things that I find dorky, geeky, or, and weebish. So, Would you be okay if your significant other was like, you are welcome to all your things that are like that in this one room of the house? No, the rest a- is just normal. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, whatever it is, I would be, I would have to, you know, and won't necessarily, I would say it's like, look, not necessarily just one room in the house. I could, I could put a random poster here and there, or if it's nicely decorated, that looks it like, you know, a nice graphic image framed poster that could go also as wall art, then I would argue my case. Um, I honestly believe that decorating a home of where a couple, a married couple lives is a shared responsibility. It needs to reflect not just one person's likes. It needs to reflect both people that live in the house. And there are going to be some interesting discussions that go for both, but you can't just roll over. And I'm, and this is also on the, on the female perspective too. You can't just roll over to somebody saying this needs to be on there. Both of you have to make legitimate arguments and, it is one of those things in which is like if somebody's argument makes more sense, then okay. But, you know, if something is really nice, it is uh, it is classy, it is not in any way trashy, uh, then, you know, there, there should be some legitimate argument about keeping stuff up. So that yeah, is I my personal you opinion. Can make it, you can combine it up, but yeah. I feel like if someone's going for a certain look at home, you can't really just be like, well, I like my thing here. It's like, uh, what was that movie? Christmas movie, Christmas Story. Mm-hmm. The, oh, the, the, the leg lamp. lamp. Oh, the yeah. leg lamp, yeah, mm-hmm. like that. Like That thing, there's no place in the house where that was going to make sense, and he really wanted it, and that, you know, that was a big issue. Of course. Uh, so yeah, That leg lamp is also... negotiation. It, 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 that leg lamp is also, to a point, inappropriate. 
I mean, you, I mean, you know, it's uh, the leg, for example, for God's sakes. It's like, how does that go with any, any decoration and, and things that are going on? So, yeah. yeah. It's all about negotiation. Absolutely. Um, so if I look back to my first apartment in college, I had a flag on the wall, a bed, a computer, a dresser. The rest was furnished by the, by the, basically it came with all the couches and stuff already in it. I was a poor college kid. I did not care. So no one could have walked in there and been like, this is who you are. Because I was just like every other kid in that area. Just existing there. You know? If you looked at my wall and saw my flag, you'd say, okay, well, that says something about who you identify as. But, you know, that's it. Uh, looking later on in my, in my life, when I was living over in China in the Middle East, I had a very sparse apartment. And... You know, anyone walking there would say, this person's not necessarily planning on staying here for very long, which mm-hmm. was the truth, mm-hmm. you know? And, and while I did stay, China, three and a half years, and uh, Middle East, seven years, I still knew at some point I was going to be leaving there. So I was not buying heavy furniture. I was not buying things that I knew that I was going to eventually part with, unless I knew that it would have decent resale value. Uh, and I wasn't going to waste my money on things I didn't really need. You know, buying a full dining set or something for an apartment where I didn't really have people over it just didn't make sense. So you walked in, you'd be like, huh, this doesn't really look like someone really lives here. And I got that comment a few times and I said, that's okay. I'm here to sleep, go to work. You know, it doesn't have to be, I don't have to have a home here. I can just be living here. Mm-hmm. Uh, when my wife did join me in the Middle East, we made some serious upgrades and it looked a lot more like a place where someone lives in. And I got a lot of stuff that I felt I didn't need simply to make her happy. <laughs> so this is part of the negotiation. And in the end, I did appreciate it. You know, that, that's one of the greatest parts of um, marrying someone that's wonderful. They introduce you to things that you didn't even know you didn't know about, you know, or like, you know, so she she has me look at furniture differently, but building home that's a good thing for me. I don't really need much. I'm not a very materialistic materialistic person. And by that I mean I don't need anything. I could be mattress on the floor and that's about it and be happy. But she you know, when I look around I say, Okay, my apartment has a lot of stuff and that's nice I appreciate it. Yeah. So today, it's all about balance. It's about developing your space, being comfortable in it, decorating to show that you have had experiences and you have interests, and you know, not going too over the maximum of and just like two people sharing space and work. Um, so for people out there that are looking to set themselves up to be more successful in welcoming another person into their space, Take a look around and see if there's anything that says, you know, that would that would say someone, uh, this person is a bachelor, and it is unavoidable. <laughs> if, you, if you've got some, you know, some half naked girl poster up in your wall, that's great. I'm sure you enjoyed that for a time, but perhaps. You want a woman to be in there and be comfortable, and maybe she doesn't want to look at that. Like maybe dig down and find something else to put up. Yeah, no, of course. And you know, it, as you mature, your changes, uh, your your taste will change, things will change, and there will be things that were important for you in your decorations beforehand that are no, that are to be no longer important for you as you grow forward, and then. Once you start having kids, then it really doesn't matter at that point because your house is going to be yeah, it's destroyed. All trash. Yeah, <laughs> it's all going to be destroyed anyway, so there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we've run this topic into the ground here a little bit. So I think we yeah. are, we are good. Um, just to let everybody know, it, final thought on my final thought on this is that your house is a reflection of who you are. So it is uh, important to consider what you put in your home. But, you know, if you feel like you like it enough and you feel like it, it, it adds to your living space, then go for it. 
So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All, right. All right. So, so. Uh, we sometimes finish these off with uh, an extra fun topic just to sort of joke around at the end. I feel like we went a bit long today, so we're probably going to save that one till the next round. Yeah, but it is a very good one, so I am going to make it's sure that. Be funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we are going to keep it. So, like, make sure you tune on, tune in with us next Wednesday, because I want to make sure that we're going to be talking about this one because this is a freaking hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Before that, on Sunday nights, we often do a deeper dive into a particular subject. So here we kind of picked a few things from Reddit and whatever different things that sort of jumped around. On Sunday, it's one topic. And it's about 45 minutes of just going real deep on it and breaking it down to small pieces. And it's generally, uh, I don't know, I guess it has a more general appeal. Yeah. Whereas something here, if you, if you don't really care about your apartment, how it looks, then the last 20 minutes didn't mean anything to you. But on, that, on Sunday, it's usually more about psychology and uh, the, the elements of relationships that everyone will have experience with. So I hope you join us for that. So you want to close this out? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, don't forget, normally on Thursdays here, uh, we also do Freeform Thursdays where we talk about general topics, sometimes about relationship stuff, but mostly in general uh, regarding uh, just general topics that we we find interesting and maybe go a little off the relationship path, but you, hopefully you find the conversations interesting. So just it's almost like a little mini vlog for us. But... We wanted to thank you so much for joining us on this special Thursday where we where we uh, spout off some relationship advice here from Reddit. As always, uh, if you have any comments, concerns, uh, articles you want to send us, go ahead and email us uh, on via Gmail, uh, twitchlinelove at gmail.com. You can also tweet us if you want to do it the quicker way. Go through Twitter and uh, you can at us at twitchline and you can link whatever you want send us messages say how we're doing uh we read all of our messages here on twitter uh also we are live streaming also to youtube at the same time so make sure if you want to see some older shows because twitch does not really archive shows longer than uh 14 days for us you can see all of our us (laughs) for us for our for you can see our whole archive of complete shows uh on youtube and you you will see the archive there you can go to youtube and type in twitch line relationship help and advice and you can go to our channel subscribe and uh, you'll be seeing all of our content there and if you want to take our content on the go uh don't have time to listen to it all at once we break up our show into the segments that we talk about and we post them up there on soundcloud so you can listen to them on your phone on your tablet or on your mobile device so you can listen to us anywhere you have an internet connection so hopefully you find all of our discussions today interesting and if you have any questions for us uh please contact us and we'll be happily answer any concerns questions or even uh, articles and comments that you might have so thank you for joining us today here on Twitch and on YouTube join us again here on Sunday as uh, Tim had mentioned we go deep dive and it is our focus segments we have so, so uh, join us here on Sunday so you'll get to know exactly what we're going to be deep diving on uh, so we change up the topics every week so it should be very interesting to listen but for Mr. Acorn I am Hodo. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday night where we will talk about our focus segments. And uh, hope you have a pleasant evening. Good night, everyone.